Shalom. Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Waha Waka Kodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, meaning coming in the name, Ba means coming in, Ha means the, Shaw means name, Raka means holy, Kodash means spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And Shalom to you, sincere brothers that scatter abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to you, sincere sisters that listen in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And uh, pretty much I have a testimony. This is lesson is going to be titled as always pray for mercy. Always pray before you leave your home. Always pray for mercy. Always pray before you leave your home. And the reason why I titled this lesson as this now, this picture that you see is not my actual car, but my car looks somewhat like this. Now, yesterday, and it's, it's, it's kind of a trip because I did a lesson yesterday about mercy. I said, you always want to pray and ask the Lord for mercy because the Lord doesn't have to give mercy to you, right? He doesn't have to give mercy to you. He can take you out of here, right? Your life is nothing but a vapor. So guess what? I go to pick up um, my niece. I have a niece, and uh, she's pregnant. My niece is like, there's like two to three years, two to three years between the age of me and my niece. My niece is like 29. I'm 32. So we were born. It's kind of strange because <laughs> we're born like three years apart. So uh, my niece, I went to pick her up from from work, and um, you know I had to drop my mom off because I take care of my mom. I'm her caregiver, things like that. So I had to take her to get her uh, heart. Um, transplant test you know to see if she had to get a, a heart transplant so I dropped my mom off you know I head out to go get my niece and um, you know I pick her up you know I'm on my way to pick up my mom we get off the freeway and there's construction now out here in Vegas there's been a lot of construction because they just been rebuilding 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 they do constructions on the streets they do constructions on the building there's always construction there's cones set up everywhere so you know, as I'm driving, I get off of the I-215, the I I'm headed down the street, you know, I'm driving, I'm not driving fast or nothing, I'm going normal speed, speed limit's 45 miles an hour, going 45 miles an hour, so we get to the light, we pass the light, as we're driving, as I'm driving, you know, going the same speed, you know, a uh, car that's in front of us, that's, so there's a car that's in front of us, and there's a car that's in front of that car, the car that's in front of the car that's in front of us cuts the individual off and jumps into the lane. Because they drive crazy as hell out here in Vegas. So the car that's in front of us, he hits his brakes. Okay. And then me, I hit my brake because I'm not even going fast. So I, I hit my brake. And then next thing you know, I hear a huge skid. Like, skirt. I'm like, I'm wondering where it's hitting, where it's coming from. And boom. I get hit in the back of me hard, man. I mean, super freaking hard. Like, I don't know how fast the lady was going. I know she was going over, probably I'll say about, I'll say between 65 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour or somewhere around there, probably 60 miles an hour because when she hit the back of my car, our necks jerked really hard. So, you know, my neck right now, I can, I can turn it, but I can't really turn it. My lower back is messed up. Um, you know, got the lady's information. She came out trying to apologize, all this other stuff. Got her information, whatever that is like that. So moral of the story is to you individuals out there. And I'll say this again. And I say, I'll say, I say this all the time. This is why it's a blessing because I prayed before I left my house. I prayed before I left. I prayed to you. How about she, my shy? I asked the Lord for mercy. I always pray for traveling mercies, Lord. Same way I leave home, I pray I return back home safely because it's, you know, it's a lot of things going on. I prayed. Now, my car is like this. Now, I'm not upset because it could have been a lot worse. You know, I could have I been deleted out of here, man. You know, 
you know, so today I'm I'm all headed on my way to see my chiropractor. Um, you know, lawyers is involved and a whole lot of other stuff. So the moral of the story, brothers, is you want to pray and ask the Lord for mercy. I don't give a damn if you forget to pray. Pray. Please pray. Please, please, please pray, pray. Ask the Lord for mercy. Mercy, 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 man. Because it could have been worse. I could have been deleted out of here yesterday. And guess what? Remember I said expiration dates? You don't know when your expiration date. That could have been my expiration date, man. All right, so we're going to get some scriptures out. I just had to share the testimony with you brothers, man. You know, I'm, my neck is messed up, but it ain't as bad as it, as it could have been, you know, as it could be. So, you know, it's always good to ask the Lord for mercy out there, man. So I'm going to read uh, Psalm 6 of King David because King David, he asked the Lord for mercy, right? And then we're going to get some other precepts up and we're going to wrap this up. This is uh, Psalm 6 in verse 1. It says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger. Neither chast, neither chast in me in thy hot displeasure. You see that? So King David, he was fearful of the Lord. He feared the Lord, man. He he knew how 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 the Lord can be. Verse two, it says, "Have mercy upon me." You see that? King David asked the Lord for mercy, and that's one thing I always pray for in this truth, man. I pray to the, for the Lord to you know keep. I pray for you brothers too, man. I pray for I pray you know that the Lord keeps us in the faith. We don't lose the faith. You know, I pray the Lord keeps us diligent, that we don't lose the diligence. You know, I pray to, that the Lord keep us embedded in this truth. We stay focused. We don't let no distractions get to us. You know, there's a lot of things, I, I, you know, that I pray for when, for you brothers, man, even myself. You know, I pray the Lord just keep the spirit on us. He don't take the spirit from us because the Lord can. He doesn't have to give mercy to you at all. It says, have mercy upon me. This is why you should pray for mercy. It says, have mercy upon me, O Lord. It says, for I am weak. Oh, Lord, heal me for my bones are vexed. And when you go into the meaning of that word vexed there, right, in a blue letter, it goes into Bahal, right, which means what? To disturb, alarm, terrify, hurry, be uh, disturbed, be anxious, right, be afraid, be uh, hurried, or uh, be nervous. It says to be disturbed, dismayed, terrified, anxious, right? To be in haste, be hasty, right? To make haste, act hastily, be hurried, be hasten, right? To dismay, terrify, to hasten, to hasten, to hastily, gang, to hasten, hurry, make haste, to, it says to dismay or terrify. Let's see if we can get a, a better understanding though of vexed, all right? Because I want to edify, you know, more, more meaning because... You know, the blue letter, it gives a uh, meaning, but not a meaning that you can understand. Vexed. Vexed. A problem, uh, it says, of a problem or issue difficult, too much debate. It says problematic. It says annoyed, frustrated, or worried. And that's vexed. Annoyed, frustrated, or worried. Better understanding. All right. Irritated. So that's what vexed means, right? So it means to be worried, irritated, afraid, uh, nervous, right? It says, oh, Lord, heal me for my bones are vexed. It says my soul is also sword vexed. You see that? So he was vexed in the flesh, this flesh, and he was vexed in his spirit. It says my soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Verse 4, it says, return, O Lord, uh, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. So there you go. He's asking the Lord for mercy because he's vexed. You know, we all go through things. King David's been vexed. He's been vexed in the flesh and in the spirit, as he was saying. So he prays the Lord for the mercy's sake to take away that, that vexed feeling, you know. So I'm just giving an example. This is why you pray for the Lord for mercy in general. All right. You should pray for the Lord for mercy in general. Verse 5, it says, For in death there is no remembrance of thee. It says, In the grave who shall give thee thanks? Verse 6, I am weary with thy groanings all the night. Make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Verse 7, it says, Mine eye, it says, Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all my enemies. Verse 8, Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord have heard the voice of my weeping. Right now, weeping is what? Let's get it. Going to mean that word weeping there. Strong's age 1065. Bahi. Bahi. Bahi, it says weeping, weeping, 
can't really get another uh, meaning for it, but we gonna go here. You see, we can get a meaning for weeping there, okay? And it says, Weeping. Right? It says, Shedding tears, using the names of three, of tree and shrub. So, weeping, shedding tears, weep. All right? Weeping, okay? And it says, Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord have heard my voice of weeping, tears, his cry, all right? His cry, because we cry out to the Lord. Right. Verse nine, it says the Lord have heard my supplication. That supplication means favor. OK, the Lord will receive my prayer. You see that? Because when you cry out to the Lord and you cry upon his name, the Lord hears your prayers, man. When you call upon the name of Yahweh Bashi Mashiach, and you're crying out to his crying out on his name, that weeping there, which means to that cry out. Right. You crying out, you crying out to the Lord. He will he will receive your prayer. It says the Lord will receive my prayer. Verse 10, it says, let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed, right? Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. And that's what King David prayed for. He prayed for, he asked the Lord for mercy through all of that. Even though he prayed for it upon the other nations, he prayed it, He prayed for mercy mainly. When I say pray for other nations, of them being vexed, take the vexation off of, off of him and put it on to the, them, as to his enemies, in other words, it says, let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be shamed suddenly. So King David mainly prays, prays to ask the Lord for mercy, man. All right. He prays to ask the Lord for mercy. Let's get another precept out. This is Psalms 51, one of my favorite chapters. This is Psalms 51, you know. It says, have mercy upon me. See, King David, he asked the Lord for mercy. It says, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yashai, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. You see that? Blot out my transgressions. Now, this is a prayer for uh, when you commit sins. But notice in this chapter, he's asking the Lord for what? Mercy. Mercy. It says, have mercy upon me, O it says, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh Bashim Ashai, according to thy loving kindness and according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions and wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. So he's praying for his sins, but he's asking the Lord for what? Mercy. It says, for I acknowledge my transgressions, his sins, and my sin is ever before me. It says, against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest it says behold i was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me right because we are born into sin right verse six it says behold thou desires truth in the inward parts and it says and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom porch me with hussop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow Make me to, it says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sin and blot out my transgression. And you see that he's praying to the Lord, but he's asking the Lord, he's asking the Lord for mercy though. It says, create in me a clean heart, meaning mine, O power, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And that's one of the main important things that we pray for in this truth. And that's mercy there. That the Lord doesn't take the Spirit from you. Because he can take the Spirit from you and give it to somebody else. That's mercy there. Because the Lord, he can take the Spirit from you. He can have you. He can give you. He can replace your spirit with a bugged out spirit. He can replace your spirit with a, with a reprobate mind. We see it happen. You know. Verse 12. Restore unto me is to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with with thy free spirit verse 13 then will i teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee right now where converted means to return or come back right I'm talking about see converted to return come back h7775 strong's h7725 Shuv. Shuv. And it says to return, to turn back, to turn, to turn back, return. You see that? To return, come, or go back. You know, we have enough of it. We have enough of that meaning, you know, convert it unto thee. It says, deliver me from the blood guiltiness, O power, and thou, and thou power of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing out loud, 
of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. It says, For thou desires not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in the burning offering. The sacrifices of Yahweh are broken are are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite mind, which it says heart there, O power thou wilt not despise. You see that? I could read more, but the main point that I'm that I'm really stating in here is the mercy part. He asked the Lord for mercy. When you read Psalm 6, he asked the Lord for mercy. When you read Psalms 51, he asked the Lord for mercy. That's the main part. That's the main thing. King David asked the Lord for mercy. Because just because you're a Hebrew Israelite, the Lord does not have to give mercy to you, man. The Lord does not have to give mercy to you. This is Lamentations 3 and 22. So we're going to read the KJV verse and we uh, read KJV version. And then we're going to go to the uh, NLT version of, of Lamentations 3 and 22. This is Lamentations 3 and 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because, because his compassion fell not. You see that? Verse 20 of uh, Lamentations 3 and 23. It says, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Verse 24, and it says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Now let's get the NLT version. Because the N NLT version, clear. And it's to the point. So like you. Phone tripping. This is Lamentations 3 and 22, right? And it says, Lamentations 3 and 22, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. You see that? And this is why you should pray to the Lord and ask the Lord for mercy. Okay? Verse 23. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Verse 24. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. You see that? Because that's who we depend on. That's who you should be praying to, crying out to, and asking for mercy to. Because just because you're a Hebrew Israelite, okay, just because you're a Hebrew Israelite, that doesn't mean that the Lord has to get mercy to you, okay? So, I just wanted to do a little testimony lesson in this, man. And at the end of the day, like I said, man, you want to ask the Lord for mercy because the Lord does not have to give mercy on to you. And like I said, my car may look somewhat like this. Because it does look like this, all right? But at the end of the day, it could have been a lot worse. And I'm glad I prayed before I left my house. And that's why I tell you, brothers, pray before you leave your house. Ask the Lord for mercy, man. Because you can leave your home and you might not come back. You leave your home and you might not come back, man. You might not come back, man. So, hey, I just wanted to share this testimony with you, brothers, man. And, um, yeah, I'm great. I'm just, my neck is just, oh man, my neck is messed up. My neck is messed up um, and my lower back. You know, I got um, some medications that they gave me, um, but I could have been a lot worse. Me and my, my niece, I have a niece that's like 29. Me and her could have been a lot, and she's pregnant. So we could have been a lot worse. That could have been judgment, but it wasn't. It was mercy of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. And I thank him for that, man. That's why I said there's never no end to temptation. Temptation is going to come. So rock uh, two and one, right? Thou came to serve thy Lord. Thou came to serve the Lord. Prepare thy soul for temptation. This is temptation, man. Never ends. Never ends, man. So, hey, I just wanted to get this lesson out. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ahava, Kakodash, and double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who will well and teach well. Because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you sincere brothers out there scattered abroad pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to you sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord Wilmer's lessons edify. So, hey, always ask the Lord for mercy. Because you never know when your time will come. So, always remember, pray for mercy. Shalom.